Bitch of Friday. The freshest. <sighs> All right, so we watched that Lea Salonga, Lea, Lea Salonga, um, Miss Saigon edition clip. And after after that one out, I actually, the both of us received quite a few messages about this compilation of, of videos that I actually think came from the Miss Saigon, the making of Miss Saigon documentary. And I actually think I've seen most of it because I've seen <laughs> I've seen the documentary already, but it's always good to revisit them. I think it's is is so inspiring to watch, you know, the behind the scenes of such an iconic staple musical in the industry. And not only not only that, but um, this is the first ever edition of Miss Saigon. So this is like the OG of the OGs. Like you gotta watch it. If you're into musicals, you gotta watch it. And if you're into amazing singing and incredible training, you gotta watch this. So here we are. Oh, I didn't know you actually had watched this. Yeah, because I think I think that if it is from from the documentary, the making but, of Miss Saigon, then I I have definitely seen yeah, it. We did receive a lot of requests for this, which I think it is like a yeah like a bunch of clips together, all the mm -hmm. stuff, maybe the process, maybe the first time she auditioned. We'll see what what's what's in it, but it's very interesting. Yeah, let, let's let's have a look. Leo. That's it's Kim. Kim. The big break. This is the first time. The royal here, this isn't here this is here, I yeah, knew. Of course, yeah. Nineteen eighty eight. Thank you. This might have been the first time. Yeah, right? this definitely looks like an open call. Crazy is that? This is not. This is not. Well, an, this is not. not definitely not the. This is definitely a fourth or fifth round when they are starting to decide who goes in what role. Right. Uh, they're playing around with characters and songs and different people. Didn't they say? Didn't things. they say at the beginning what it was? No, it just said where it was. Theatre Theater Road, Road, Drury Lane. Drury Lane, London. Drury Lane, London. December nineteen eighty-eight. It was cold. That's what I can tell you. December. Cold. Thank you. You're welcome, mate. Shall I have a cup of tea? You are cradled in my arms. You asking as little as you can. It's bloody cold in there, I can tell you, yeah. Little sniff of a little man. She was 16 at this time. 16, 17, I think. Such depth. Well, they said it was there was going to be an assessment. Um, they were going to make a <laughs> <laughs> those teas, huh? More songs from the show Miss Saigon. They wanted to see us, I think, of how we look see? on the stage. And it's well, they were pretty vague. That's the first know. audition, right? <laughs> no. This is a, like definitely like a third round in. Close calls already. This, what the fuck? <laughs> After three days of intensive work sessions, Lea Salonga is offered the leading role of Kim. Right, so, so they have been working at this point, and there's obviously interest in Lea at this, at this point, right? No, so. definitely. When you get past the fourth or the third round of close calls, you're definitely in. They're just trying to figure out who, who, who's where, who. Yeah, where to put you in the cast. You know, I'm not, who's yeah, the girl next to her? Well, she was probably also, you know, competing for the same type of roles. Oh. Yeah, so maybe she got other stuff later on or... Uh, Maybe they just Leia got her place. Well, you imagine, right? It, it, anything can happen at that point in in in, in uh, the auditions. Because I, I I mean at that point you kind of know the magnitude of what you're being involved in, right? Yes, definitely. Spe you know you auditioned, you got callbacks. If you're involved in musical theatre world, you know the you know the director, you know. And if you have intensives like like this, like they're saying that they work at least for a weekend, 
on 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 the material a because weekend, yeah. because this material has never been seen before. This is original material at this point, so nobody had heard it before. But the people that were auditioning for it, yeah. so you, if you, you got really the get... callback, right? So they had to teach you everything off of the book. How mad is that? So it, the pressure is pretty big when the musicals are of this magnitude and they haven't been heard before. It's like the first time ever because obviously it can be whatever they they want it to be at right. that point so it's how and well reviews, they want it and final reviews will be based on that one performance that's right right mad. and how you look on stage and how you look, how you portray the the, the characters this and stuff this is fun good yeah this is from the uh, from the documentary i've seen this see there is no microphones there is all about projection and pacing it's not even about the acting through it's all about the musicality childhood friend and fellow performer from repertory Repet, repertory philippines monique wilson is cast as saigon bar girl mimi m kim understudy so that's the girl so, that's next to her. Yeah, the the understudy roles are very difficult because you gotta learn your own role and also learn someone else's the lead the lead's role. So Mimi and Kim, because those are two roles. So this girl is literally learning a whole freaking script, three people's script. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, her, her one. And these two extra characters. So if if any of the main characters are ill or fall injured or anything, uh, freak accidents. Whatever. Exactly. Then Monique will come in and, and cover them. Being a. But it's a, never a guarantee, of course. No, 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 never, never, never oh. at all. And actually, you get paid more to be an understudy, of really? course. Yeah. Oh, nice. But because it's very difficult, though. Like you learn three times the material that you gotta learn. Like so understudies, which I, I don't know. Again, apologies for my ignorance. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm just... I sort of bring coffee or something. <laughs> no, the understudies got a pretty hard job to do. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's like... I mean, nice if you get it because of the money, but I wouldn't want to be you. No, definitely. They're memorizing bit. What the... F How the, do you the, memorize scripts? The swings, the swings are the toughest things to do. Like, it, even, even when you're like a, on a dance swing or stuff like that, you have to learn p other people's placings and stuff it gets pretty nuts i Jesus i Christ. you know i owe my respects to people in the industry who do that <laughs> i could never <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty hard this is the one we've seen first, first day, day of, of rehearsal. rehearsal so that was for so this rehearsal. is the first day of rehearsal they Not they already they already had said i knew it because they were way too comfortable with each yeah. other but how did you see? yeah and I'm pretty sure even though she was side reading, she was already very comfortable with the song. And this is original material. So I guess that clears up that confusion that was going mm -hmm. on. Woman is magical, dude. Oh, I love it. It's very, it's very difficult. <laughs> Just think mannerisms. Such beautiful tonality, though, like so sweet. It's perfect for for Kim. It's perfect for the role. Gorgeous. It's beautiful. <laughs> that that's beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. May I ask? Yes. Who like who are they? Like oh. what do they do? Because yeah, there's like fifty people there watching them. Usually, uh, like, um, well, it's like ten, but we don't. usually in the panel, in the panel for for first time musicals like this, like um, the writers, both the composers, uh, composer and lyricist, are in the panel. Um, musical director, um, 
perhaps also the head of the company who's running uh, everything Damn. as well. So you got big time guys watching. <laughs> so just you know, I, I, I received... uh, obviously the director and um, and the musical director as well. So I received a lot of messages. It's like, oh, how come ballet was in theater and you weren't, Ephra? <laughs> I wasn't. I just wasn't. Don't like theatre. <laughs> not my thing. Not into that whole stuff. Right? If right, if but right, just if... because Bali knows that much, don't expect me to know that much. <laughs> I know nothing. Hence why all the questions and all that stuff. Dummy right here. But this is utterly interesting to me. And I hope it's also interesting to other people. It certainly seemed last time it's very enjoyable for people. And uh, I, I, I love hearing this side of you because... This was actually where we we, we parted ways. I went yeah. a different career. Ballet went musical theatre for a hardcore six, seven years. So it's like, you know, she's you know, she's swimming in this water. I certainly will drown. So. <laughs> no, it's it's actually quite fun to share this stuff with you. Um, well, I certainly never showed interest before. Yeah, I know. It's really cool because, that we get to share it now. It's it's awesome. Because I the thing that always drove me off theatre was kind of the theatrics of it ironically enough it, and and i never really paid attention much to the music and through the channel There's i've had so the opportunity much complexity, yeah. and also through seeing you perform i was like Fuck, that's a good song mm. and then i would come and i would search up on youtube like and it was a song from a theater show yeah from a, you know so it's, they certainly make amazing music yes absolutely i agree i actually think um i was also gonna say in the panel you also have the script writers and um um, and you know whoever whoever needs to get involved yeah. usually usually is like the the directives people who are building the characters because obviously they're gonna give directions to the actresses or actors and and yeah we'll see yeah it's pretty interesting so lovely lovely it's another it's acting gorgeous man. gorgeous so like a that's an interview all oh, right Leah Salonga, Kim, Simon Bowman, it's Chris, and this is oh. Leah Salonga. Hello. Well, I'm delighted to have you on the show. Thank this you. is the first television show you've so done. So RP, right? A lot of RPs, yes. You're a veteran of television shows in your native Philippines. Yes. I've had my own TV show back home yeah. around two years with See, my brother. We're Those brothers! Hey! That's something similar. Let's go, sibling, Even sibling power. we weren't the only hosts of our show. <laughs> no, no, no. But, um... Here, you hear those rounded vowels? Those were taught. She did not come in talking that way. Like, I saw the whole documentary. She spoke very good English and a very clear, resonant and beautiful, beautiful diction. But those rounded vowels, those were suggested. <laughs> <laughs> those were, try this. You ever say them or you're off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it called? RP? RP? Whatever received called? pronunciation. But, but, here's the thing. You can have received pronunciation without having a British accent, and and and, and a lot of That's people cool. actually, yes, it, it, like that very, like it gives you that real like royal air without the the British accent. Right. Um. Um. It's like proper English people call it. I see. But those rounded vowels are from that Theater. British, yeah, right. that British accent one coming in. You're done here. Yes, this is the first one. You're a veteran of television shows in your native Philippines. Yes. I've had my own TV show back then. Own. Yeah. Own. Two years with my brother. Brother. And um, we're mostly a children's show. We have some musical numbers and do all sorts of things. Well, so nuts. It's yeah. basically our show. Yes. As well. mm -hmm. And you've appeared in all sorts of musicals. Yes. The first one was The King and I when I was seven. Aww. The first lead I got was in Annie when I was nine. Yeah. Annie? Oh, yes. nice. It's terrific to have you here. I mean... They must have scoured Delighted to the have world. Here. Good host. How, how do you wonderful. cope? How old are you? 18. Thank you. And how do you cope? Well, first of all, you've had an enormously successful career in your home country. How do you cope with having to get involved in love scenes and all the rest? It's That's difficult true. enough if you've got to sing at the same time. <laughs> how do you cope with that? Um, for one thing, I have a very good director, Nicholas Heitner. Oh my god! Of, of, of Literally theater, royally, and, um, royalty, royalty, like what the hell? Partner, Simon Bowman. And it took uh. a pretty long time to get the love scenes right for me. Because yeah. I've never I've fallen in love before. So it took a while to get to get the passion out. Yeah. But eventually it did. How did, how did, That's you, interesting, how did your parents feel when they saw you in this role? They loved it. 
Mm-hmm. They did love the show. My father was very supportive. I said, Dad, I called him once. I said, Dad, I'm going to be appearing in very skimpy costumes. I'm going to be doing shipping <laughs> scenes. He goes, well, dear, it's reality. You know, you have to do it because it's real. You know, he's just, he, he, he's not very, he's it's protective. Good father. But he knows that I've got to do this because it's for the role. That's My right. mum was very understanding. It took a while. We were pretty shocked at first. When yeah, we you're a long way from home, Ed. You feel a bit... Yes. Homesick. Mm-hmm. I miss all my friends back home and my family and my brother and my sister, my dad. So she came alone, alone. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss them all. And of course, you haven't got much time to make friends here. You're, you're on stage. Working all the time. Like, Working oh, all the time. And, and two I friends, actually. Yeah. All of them members of the cast. So I made lots of friends. 41, 42. <laughs> producer, the director, composer. They're all my friends now.